Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to Kitzbühel in Austria, where today I'm going to go for a test drive in the new Bentley Continental GT. It's the third generation of Bentley's 2 plus 2 luxury coupe. Today we're going to find out what it's all about, have a good look around the exterior and interior, and find out what makes this new car worth the £160,000 price tag. So let's get started, take a quick look, and then jump out on the roads. The Continental GT needs little by way of an introduction. They have sold 70,000 of them or so since the launch of the first generation in 2003. It was updated in 2010 and now we have the third gen of their luxury Grand Touring 2 Plus 2 in 2018. We're just ahead of customer deliveries getting started but just for a quick preview and walk around of the car to discuss some of the headline features and details of what you really get for your money. It's an all-wheel drive luxury GT car of course it has a new version of the 6 litre W12 twin turbocharged 635 horsepower the body panels are largely aluminium created using a super forming technique at 500 degrees which allows for it to have some incredibly sharp lines we'll talk more about the design as well it's running on a three chamber suspension system which means basically a ride that can be incredibly comfortable but also very very sporty at the other end of the spectrum Things like headlights, the Matrix LED lights with 82 individual LEDs in each headlight. And wait until you see the inside of this car, which is the first edition. We can have a look at the Mulliner design specification, Mulliner driving spec, which also has with it, inside the car, the triple-sided rotating display. I can't wait to show you that. But here, this new diamond stitching took them 18 months to develop, and the car has 310,675,000 stitches. So we can have a look in more detail at the interior later on, but for now, I'm gonna jump into this sequin blue car to take it out for a drive to experience what the new Continental GT is like to drive. The luxury starts before you even enter the car. The way the doors are engineered, they will hold at any position that you open them to with the hinges, but just feels like quality and class. And that is what describes so much of this car. But let me jump in, start it up, and have a listen to the W12 as it roars into life. That's a new sound. I wasn't expecting to hear it like that. It's much higher pitched and more raspy than we've had before. But I think it's time to go drive. Here we go then, my first time driving the new Conti GT, and that is because Bentley have just finished their final refinement work to hone in the configuration, particularly the software for the gearbox. So it has the eight-speed dual-clutch system from Porsche, the PDK gearbox. Now in a Porsche, it's very sporty, but Bentley also wanted it to have some very comfortable characteristics as well, so they've been working on the last stages of refinement with that. And talking about refinement, as I close the door, it is very quiet in here. It's a warm day, so the air conditioning is blowing, but you don't hear much else. I'm also going to turn on my cooled seat, which is also very nice, but the screens are great. You've got a full digital display for the driver for the first time in a Bentley, but let us get on the move in automatic. We're heading up towards a mountain pass, so we'll get some dynamic driving as well today, but just to get on the move, it does so very gently, very quietly, with a distinct W12 noise that you have coming from behind. So you have a few different driving modes and we'll run through all of these later, but you have comfort, the Bentley mode, sport and custom. Bentley mode is their optimized configuration between comfort and sport, but it will change things like the suspension, the throttle response, the noise of the car, the steering feel. And we can go through those different modes later on and experience what they're all like. But just driving like this gently, there's a lovely head up display. You've got all sorts of technology in here, as you can imagine, all your lane guidance, your adaptive radar, control, your safety systems, your 3D, uh, sorry, 360 degree cameras, you've got night vision as well, completely loaded, absolutely up to the top. The interior is of course the nicest materials, the steering wheel feels lovely, all of the finish and trim that we have in here is wonderful and we'll talk more about that as well as we explore the interior later on. But I'm just going to get cruising, head up towards the mountain where we can take a proper look around the car and start off I think on the exterior talking a bit about the design side of things, how the car differs, the techniques that are used and then we can have a look at the engine as well. 
before it's time to properly push it and experience the dynamic side of the drive. Let's take a walk around to dive into certain aspects of the car in more detail. So we'll start off with the design, how it's still very iconic Continental GT, but substantially evolved from the previous two generations. Then we'll open up the bonnet to take a look at the new 6-litre W12 to run over some of the facts and figures and performance stats behind it before the luxurious interior. And believe me, now that I've become a little bit acquainted with the car, it is a very, very nice place to be. But before we do, let's rewind back half a century to the 1952 Bentley R-Type Continental. It was the fastest four-seater car at its time. Now this might not be the fastest in the world, but the top speed is 207 miles per hour, 333 kilometers per hour, so it is a very, very quick thing indeed. The brief behind the car is that it is designed and engineered to be the best Grand Tourer in the world, so let's head in and take a proper look around it. There are three main design lines that have been a mainstay of the Continental from the R-Type through to the three modern generations. So starting at the front, those are the power line that runs from the front lights along the shoulder of the car. That brings us towards Bentley's distinct rear haunches, the aggressive shape around the rear axle, and thirdly, the swooping roof line of a sports coupe. But what you'll notice is that all of the lines and edges are sharpened up, and that's thanks to a new engineering technique that is used to make the body panels. So all of them, bar the boot lid, are made from superformed aluminium. What that means is the sheet aluminium is heated up to 500 degrees, and air pressure blown over a mold enables it to take these very, very detailed lines for example as you can see outside of the bonnet as you see if we come back towards these haunches how it folds almost back in underneath itself which gives you a lot of texture and shape to the car as you're looking at it and in this case enhances the sportiness of the look and in this case it also has the largest piece of superformed aluminium used for the body side of any car in production so to run a bit more detail around the exterior if we start at the front you have this very very proud front grille lower than before wider than before a little bit more aggressive but with the bright chromed finish standing very very strong too that is flanked either side by these matrix led headlights as mentioned the crystal cut effect that you can see on the inside 82 leds effectively meaning you can keep it in full beam mode and it will blank out where the oncoming objects are so as not to dazzle the drivers coming towards you but also due to the brightness of the leds no headlight washer required which is quite an interesting thing to see as well down beneath that the car as you can see is opened up for cooling coming through towards the engine that we'll get back to in a moment this car's fitted with 21 inch wheels. You can have it with 22 inches if you have the Mulliner driving spec, but right behind them, particularly nice touch right here, having the 12, signifying the W12 engine on that side wing vent. Um, you can also notice the shape is rather akin to the Flying B, although more accurate on the other side. We'll head around there in a second. The chrome stripe then that continues back towards the rear of the car. Where we come to the back, you have a deployable rear spoiler will go up at speed. The Bentley lettering now written underneath the logo at the back, not necessarily the biggest fan of that. I think this is a pretty iconic logo really where you'd press that button to open up the boot if it was unlocked at the moment. There's a chrome trim around the rear bumper um, as well with these large uh, very narrow oval exhaust pipes around the back. To go to the engine and opening these doors is always a delight. Down in the driver's footwell there is a very stiff lever to pull but that will pop the bonnet and we can come round and have a look at this power plant. So the lever is right here under the flying B and we reveal the 6-litre W12. So it has two twin-scroll turbochargers, making 635 horsepower and as much as 900 newton meters of torque. That is a huge number. So thanks to the all-wheel drive system, that will propel this car to 100 kilometers an hour in just 3.7 seconds. That's 62 miles an hour, or to use the UK 60 miles an hour, it is only 3.6. That is very quick when you consider that this car is 2,240. 44 kilos. It is not light by any stretch of the imagination. It is 80 kilos lighter than the previous car, and that's thanks in part to the engine alone being 30 kilos lighter than before. But you have to remember it's still around 400 kilos heavier than the Aston Martin DB11 V12. However, they've introduced new technologies, cylinder deactivation, so it will cut half of the engine, it will cut one of the banks, turn off six cylinders, and that will help with fuel economy and efficiency side of things. After closing down the bonnet, let's jump to the inside. But firstly, let me show you the key that I have right here. Quite a large and weighty object, but very nice materials and finish. Of course, it's a keyless system, but has the buttons on the back should you need to use them. I'm just gonna pop that back in my pocket while we come and take a look now at the full interior of this car. So it's not fitted 
with the Mulliner driving spec, it doesn't have all the diamond quilting that we saw in the first edition earlier, but it does have a very, very nice dual tone configuration that goes very well with the exterior of this car. It also has the 18 speaker name system, 2200 watts of audio inside here, as well as the Cote de Genève trim that you have in the center inspired by watch manufacturing in Switzerland. But let me just step in, take a seat inside here and turn it on for a second. But before I do, the start button is right here in the middle. Take a look at this, the triple rotating display in the center. Here it's finished with the regular veneer that you have extending all the way around the driver and passenger zones of the car. If we start it up, comfort access, the steering wheel moved, but also that display rotated. So there are 40 moving parts in here, two motors to handle the way it protrudes and goes back in, but also the rotation with their own independent gearboxes. But it's almost silent the way it rotates and you can also press it once more and it will spin to that triple more analog display that we have with clock, temperature and even a compass in the center. That is incredibly smart or you can bring back the display and we'll run through that, that 12.3 inch display in more detail later on after the main part of the drive just to go through the different options and settings. But down here it's all very smart, everything you touch in traditional Bentley style is incredibly nice, feels quality, feels luxury, feels how it should. The leathers, of course, you have heating, cooling, massaging seats, no end to the technology. And obviously we have the digital display as well that we can cycle through all sorts of different screens, navigation, you can set it up and configure exactly what you'd like to see there using the toggles that you have over the side. I will say that they do feel very VW group. I mean, they are, of course, because the car is sharing parts from different manufacturers. And in fact, the main platform for the car was de developed in partnership with Porsche, akin to the Panamera. If we just have a quick glance towards the rear, there's not a huge amount of space back there, but the level of quality continues into the back and there is some space for two people to sit and take a look. We'll glance at that in more detail as well later on. But let us now close the door and head back onto the roads to go and experience it through the different driving modes and discover more of what the car is like out on the road. In general terms, this car is a feast of technology. There is a lot going on, including one thing that is borrowed in particular from the Bentayga, which is Bentley's Dynamic Ride. So it uses the same 48 volt active anti-roll system, where it's constantly evaluating the road surface you're driving on and adjusting accordingly to give you the smoothest possible ride. And I have to say, the ride is very, very good. If you turn it up into the sport mode, you can sense there is a bit more of a sporty character to it, but we'll need to get out to some proper roads to test the dynamics in more detail for the moment. Going back into Bentley mode, one thing I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of is the steering in the default setting. It feels not quite as connected as I'd like it. And the nice upshot of that is if you then go into comfort, there's a lot of wiggle room, which obviously for a long distance motorway cruise, for example, is a relaxing style of driving. If you do turn it back into sport, it feels substantially more connected, there's more weight to the feel but still not quite 100% there and that's probably in part due to the weight of the car, due to the weight distribution which is improved. It's now 55 front, 45 rear, it was 57 front, 43 rear but by extending the wheelbase, pushing the front wheels 13 and a half centimeters further forward has given it this wheelbase that can give it slightly more driving dynamics in that respect. One thing I do particularly like in terms of your everyday driving right now, for example, is the moving of the shifter paddles. They used to be fixed paddles mounted behind the steering wheel but slightly up, with the indicator and light stalks on each side respectively slightly down, which meant it was a bit of a fiddle to actually find them. Now they're as per the Audi-esque steering wheel mounted right on the back, easier to press, turn with the wheel, which just feels an awful lot more comfortable to me. The gearbox, which is of course the reason it's taken a while to actually get behind the wheel, is very, very smooth. Clearly they've worked on that, they've done a good job, it feels, even in sport mode, like the luxurious Grand Tourer that the car is supposed to be. So big kudos to them for that. Another technology feature is the cruise control, the adaptive radar cruise control. Obviously it will work on a motorway detecting the car in front, brake you if required, um, and accelerate you back up to speed as well. But it also has a connection to the satellite navigation system, which means it effectively knows the speed limit. And if you're on a motorway and the speed limit drops from 120 kilometers an hour down to 100, it will slow the car down automatically and it will speed it up when you get back into the open uh, sections as well if you have the feature enabled. So that is just a very nice thing. We're seeing that in a few different cars, but all of those are part of giving it this very upper class premium driving experience with the technology seamlessly operating in the background 
but I'm expecting when we get towards some twisty roads, it's probably gonna be quite good to handle there as well, but let's see. This is now my kind of road, the twisty tarmac up towards Grossglockner, where we can push the car on a little bit harder and see what it's like. Now, one thing that interests me before we do is the torque distribution of the car. So by default, in Bentley mode or comfort mode, all of the torque is on the rear axle. It can then send up to 38% to the front axle if it detects any slippage or if it would help with traction. If you're in sport mode, that number reduces down to 17%, so a maximum only of 17% torque to the front axle. So it's effectively a rear wheel drive car with a little bit to the front if it needs it to help you in wet conditions or tricky conditions. It also does torque vectoring by braking, so it will brake the inside wheel at the front to help pull the car around the corner, which obviously significantly helps with the weight of it. Now the gearbox is in the sport mode, you can pull it down to go between drive or sport or into manual where it'll hold just on the paddles. Little tunnel, but you don't really hear much. And yes, the W12 is there, it's present. You get the noise of it, but not a lot. And that is basically down to the sound insulation of this car, the double glazing of the windows. Now, if you do put your foot down, my word, it gets a move on fast. 900 newton meters of torque is an awful lot. And to bring this amount of weight uphill like this, is quite remarkable. It's it's very Bentley-like, it's very effortless in its nature in the way it puts down the power and just gets going. There's no slip or loss of traction at all. The gearbox has some nice burbles when you do downshift and there's a nice upshift noise as well that you get out of it. But I would say you do feel the weight, you do feel the front end, perhaps not as much as the previous gen car. And I always felt, if you do rewind back to gen two, you had a special edition based on the V8, the Continental GT3R and then you had the Super Sports based on the W12. And I was always a fan of the V8 because having less weight up at the front gives you more turning and more of a dynamic driving feel. Now this has the W12, but by having less weight up there, by changing the weight balance distribution, does an awful lot of a better job about it in the way that the car feels to actually then go out and drive. And on this very smooth tarmac on a lovely day like today, slight delay on the shift there, it feels really quite at home and comfortable to be honest. I'm enjoying driving it here. Now, perhaps a slightly more dynamic car would be more appropriate, but it's not that bad. As much as I absolutely love this kind of road, the tight twisty tarmac meandering up the hill, surrounded by snow, some amazing scenery, it is where you start to realize the size and weight of this car. It is a big old thing, both in terms of the actual outright weight, but also in terms of the physical size. These are some tight twisty corners, these hairpins going up, and you're definitely very aware of the scale of the thing. It feels like a large car to be driving. You don't have the best ability to position where exactly it is on the tarmac. What you do have is this effortless power that only a Bentley delivers like this. It's not screaming and shouting, but with this amount of torque, the way it gets moving when you come out of the corners is just frankly astonishing. Up steep sections of hill and away it goes. Even in manual mode, it will upshift automatically when it gets up towards the red line. But 900 Newton meters of torque, you do have a better turn in at the front than you did in the previous car. There is no question about that. The torque vectoring helping with that with the braking for sure, but also the weight distribution and balance on top of that. But I'm having fun and that's what it's about. The car is clearly positioned more towards being a Grand Tourer, a very, very luxury Grand Tourer, as we'll talk more about on the inside than it is a sports car. So it's not necessarily fair on Bentley to, to bring it here. But when you are driving a road like this, Needless to say, it's still pretty good fun and very entertaining, and that's basically what this kind of thing is about. Wow, have a look at this, right up towards the very top. The road, I think, swoops around the end of the peak and then comes back down the other side. But this is the top of the Grossglockner Pass in Austria, with the view opening up in front of us in the most breathtaking of ways. What an incredible location. The roads up here are tremendous. What an incredible drive. And where I'm parked now is surrounded by some spectacular scenery. Just look at the jagged mountains, the way the valley disappears off into the distance over there. And even in the mirror, you can catch a glimpse of another Continental GT that's with me as well. Now I was going to say that it's potentially an unusual environment for a Bentley Continental GT to be driven, parked right alongside the snow that we have here. Except a little bit of thinking about it, and this car's actually all-wheel drive, plus it's really rather practical and comfortable. 
that makes it almost an ideal car to take on a ski trip, to take to drive in any weather conditions on that kind of road trip or adventure. You can take up to four people, two plus two. Admittedly, it might not be the most comfortable in the back for a tall adult, but you've got a lot of luggage space in the boot. But let's start taking a detailed look around the inside here. And the first thing I'm gonna do actually is just slide my seat backwards so that I can have a slightly better view and also lower the climate control air conditioning to be blowing slightly less strongly at the camera. So to get us started, on the door actually, the Flying B door handle. I really like this very neat integration of the B from the Bentley logo, from the bonnet badges of old that you have in there. And in fact, every material that you touch and look at, whether it's the metals, the veneers, the leathers, are all very, very nice. There are one or two buttons that I'm not the biggest fan of, and we'll get to those as we explore more of the trim and the center console. But on the initial surface of it, it is all brilliant. Obviously beneath that you have your mirror controls and your windows, but even the name speaker grills are lovely things down here. You've got the plaque, the entry sill, you have the illumination of the Bentley logo on the outside. You've got your seats that can move in about a million different ways, your side bolsters, your lumbar support, your massaging functionality. You've got a couple of different programs that you can have at various strengths for the massaging seats, which make it a very comfortable car to do a long distance drive in, I'm sure. If we just pull that closed, you can see in here the buttons open and close the boot as well as your memory seats button number one and two only two often you'd have three memory modes in a car here you've got your light controls a few buttons your cruise control your adaptive cruise control stalk quite a nice finisher on that the gold uh, bezel that it has around seems a little bit almost unique there are very few of those color touches in the car here around the center of the uh, systems around there and also on the clock in the middle and then above that you have your uh, usual lights and indicators on the left and your wipers over there on the right. The steering wheel itself, as I mentioned earlier, does have the exact same button configuration as say an RS6 for example. It has nicer um, turning scroll wheels that you have here in the middle but because they're finished in metal and obviously the Bentley badge worn in the center as well as the dual tone finish but it is very familiar so to speak. The air vents again awesome things they always have been in Bentley in the way they have the mechanical feel to open and close them and slow down or increase the airflow that's coming through. Let's start a little bit with the driver display, a full digital virtual cockpit that we have now. At the moment you can see the speedometer on the left hand side and the rev counter on the right. It will always upshift, I've noticed, quite early actually. It seems to upshift as you get towards the rev counter but I'm sure you can change the different driving modes. This is all controlled through your toggles here. So for example, your playlist, um, your contacts, or bring up the navigation or all of the different trip information. The music that we've been listening to, well, we've got Major Lazer, we've had David Guetta, but we've also had Hans Zimmerman, all sorts of different songs. Awesome, awesome sound system. The name Hi-Fi is absolutely incredible, so I'm not surprised they've given us lots of different music to listen to. So you can scroll through those displays. Down at the bottom, you have the digital speedometer readout, your clock, temperature, and you also got the traffic sign information if you didn't bring it up in full, as well as the Bentley Assist with all the uh, safety systems that the car has installed and set up. On the right hand side you have your heated steering wheel control as well as audio and music as well. And you can change the view just to bring up more trip information depending basically how you want to have this done and what you would like to have the car showing. So a larger navigation screen there if that is the way around you'd prefer it. Or bring the rev counter back. Very smooth, very quick, nice graphics and animation. Now let's come to this central screen, the rotating display that has been talked about so much. Now I showed you a little bit earlier, of course, how you can turn it on and off, and that is a very smooth, very quiet, very neat process, it has to be said. Is it largely a gimmick? Because basically you would always have it showing that screen. If you turn it off, it would go back to the standard um, eventually I'd have to give it a bit more time, um, plain so to speak, similar finish um, to the passenger side of the dashboard. I'm actually going to turn it on because I want to keep the air conditioning running. You can see the way it revved up there. I like the screen a lot, 12.3 inch digital display, retina display, very high resolution, very crisp and clear and it operates very quickly and efficiently and moves around, has a lot of access. You can see here some of the bits of information and functionality we have, the suspension ability to raise it, uh, night vision head up display, there's a very nice head up display with navigation instructions for the driver, you can just catch a glimpse of that in the distance in front of me, um, safeguard, this is showing us the driving mode so we're in the Bentley mode which you would toggle um, into sport where it would turn off the coasting or the different modes. The rear spoiler you can press here to open and close it. A bit akin to the Panamera, similar system the way that's controlled as well. Um, if we just go back through the different modes, you obviously have navigation, 
all the functionality you'd expect it to have the ability to pinch in and zoom out so you can see that we're in the mountains here that's not necessarily the fastest in the world but it is using Google Earth so it is giving us the 3D representation and lots of information also destination traffic information um, favorites you can save going down to media nice inter interface for the media controls depending how you've got it set up and what's playing into the phone of course does what you'd expect it to car is where we have access to some of this information the TPMS the tire pressures and also the settings you can change an awful lot of things including the massaging here displays driver assistance climate took a moment there just to think about it the uh, usual controls you'd have and apps as well because it's connected so you can have lots of different um, things set up the sound settings and just a few more settings so there's lots in there I like this I'm not 100% sure about that and one of the reasons I'm not 100% sure is I don't really like these buttons they do feel a little bit plasticky I'm not gonna lie the toggles the rotating jog dials are lovely but these plastic buttons feel a little bit out of place to me you can go back home and have the three front tiles by the way so you can change these and configure what you'd like to have there and they're all interactive live actually that's a perfect view probably maybe even change away to have a trip information thing on the right side but your jukebox and your navigation I like that an awful lot so continuing down below that you have the lovely clock some more air conditioning vents and this trim which is called Cote de Genève it is designed like for example the parts used inside a tourbillon watch or the like it feels textured as you run your fingers down and it looks very smart I do like that an awful lot that continues into again this panel which as these buttons feels a little plasticky to me when you start pressing the buttons you've got a lot of control uh, your temperature controls fan I've got my ventilated seats on heated seats as well sinking the left side to the right your heated front and rear windows electronic handbrake traction control hazard lights down the right side obviously you've got similar air conditioning controls for the passenger recirculation air conditioning on max and hard fixed buttons to retract the spoiler up and down uh, should you prefer from the back at the bottom you've got PDC so you can bring up the 360 degree camera vision uh, or the cameras front and back that's actually looking in front of us at the moment which is quite a nice thing as well if you're concerned about the length of the car at the front and then the center toggle is where you change your driving mode so sport you can hear it gets a little louder the Bentley mode comfort or custom to the right where you can configure everything exactly how you'd like it and often I would be inclined to have custom mode configured with soft suspension with sportier everything else sporty gearbox noise feel but the softer suspension side if we continue further back this armrest actually slides forwards and backwards it reveals in front of it the cup holders that you have here stowed underneath close that trim back up open the armrest decent storage bucket in there with your 12 volt socket uh, a carpet almost thing at the bottom rubber mat to stop things sliding around and a few USB ports as well yeah we've got two USB ports back there continuing around the car the veneer trims all the way around the cabin back towards the um, seat belt dispenser I suppose it hands the seat belt out towards you uh, when you close the door as well but again all very nice leathers materials the headrest is soft and this is not the upgraded seat option that had that diamond stitching that we saw earlier you also have these particularly convenient storage buckets one on each side for the driver and passenger but you could put your phone or your wallet just in there and that is a very nice way to use the space anyway let me jump out for the moment I will flick the car off and show you inside the back to open this you have a lever just here which will start the seat sliding forward and you can tell from that being in my position my legs will not fit down there but with it folded forward let's just step in to see a little bit of what it is like and you have some charging plugs back here as well as the 12 volt socket USB ports right there cup holders you can actually cover that up I think with this flap over the top you've got the system there to through load through straight to the back that feels a little bit flimsy to be honest maybe that could be slightly sturdier the seats are comfortable if you are back here I can feel that my hair is brushing on the roof line if I just spin the camera around you can see that I mean I'm five foot ten and a half one meter 78 or so and I'm right up at the top but the knees would be the big problem I'm not going to be able to fold that seat backwards as you can see from the passenger side there that's definitely a no-go it's smart though the materials are great you can independently do the rear windows also from the back should you wish so let me step out it's okay to step in and out but not okay to fold the seat back when you're in and I'll come around and just quickly show you the boot where we've got an awful lot of luggage currently stowed so you'll have to excuse me for this press and hold the button and it will pop open but you can see quite how much that you can actually fit in here we've got three suitcases or so some other bags also all works completely fine back there and then you can close it or lock the car 
with the power folding buttons back there too. The chrome trim here that runs around the tail lights is quite a smart touch. You've got lots of chrome trim that you can see around the back, also the touch that comes around the corners, just enhancing the sportiness of the look of the car as well. Let's just come back actually, shut the door for a moment. Look at that cabin, what a lovely place that is. Soft closing doors, naturally. But there we have it then, the new Bentley Continental GT. So let's return a little bit to the question we thought about at the start of this video. Is it worth £160,000? Now the base price of the new Continental GT with the W12 is £159,100. This specific car is £195,265. So it's going to be near on two hundred grand, however you spec it. Ultimately, it is a very fast, very effortless, very comfortable car that is incredibly luxurious and smart in the way it goes about it. Yes, there are one or two more things on the interior that I think could be better. It's very much what you would expect the car to be, but it is a significant step on, and I do very much think that it is worth the cost of 160k for a Conti GT. So I've thoroughly enjoyed today. I hope you've enjoyed the opportunity to have a full look around it inside and out, see what it's like to drive here on the twisty roads and also on some of the more gentle countryside roads as well. But hopefully we'll see more with this car in the future and I think potentially there might even be other variants to come down the line maybe even a V8 and it'll be very interesting to see what that will be like to drive anyway that is it for this time I am short on breath because of the altitude but I've had a wonderful day and I hope you've enjoyed the video I'll catch up with you again very soon cheers <laughs>